Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Thursday, the 7th of July 2022. So bonds, bullion and black gold drop. Dollar pops as Fed confirms hawkish uh, stance. Uh, rate hike odd rose for July and September, uh, very modestly on the day. Well, we'll wait and see. I should imagine they'll get just above uh, 3% and then that will be it. Uh, stocks bounce and uh, bonds sold as mixed data and damp squib FOMC minutes. Uh, according to uh, the US market wrap. Um, yeah, mixed services yesterday with jolts as well. Uh, interesting uh, numbers there. If we have a quick look uh, yesterday, uh, the jolts coming out at uh, 11.25 as opposed to 11.05 and 55 over 53 which is actually inflationary in the stock market of course is uh, moving to the upside. Uh, well, so we're here, let's have a look for today. Uh, we've got uh, economic forecast that's tentative so that doesn't mean to say it will be released and there's no set time uh, 12.30 ECB again unemployment uh, claims the weekly one from the US and then uh, FOMC Bullard speaks later so yeah that's uh, yesterday was a bit of a bounce and they bounced out overnight uh, as well and then complete uh, change here but uh, absolute delusional uh, from the Telegraph yesterday, households uh, could survive a 5% uh, ra uh, rate hike, uh, says uh, Bank. Bank of England orders uh, banks to build up their rainy day funds as an economic outlook deteriorates. And this is the, uh, the, the beautiful bit. The Bank of England has raised the specter of a sharp rise in interest rates after Deputy Governor Sir John Cunliffe said that households could withstand the borrowing costs of a, as high as 5% without defaulting on their debts. Really? Put the rates up. If you're that confident, put the rates up to 5%. And probably the bigger question is, why aren't rates 5% already then? Unbelievable, isn't it? How they put this uh, nonsense out. You know, this is all this is doing is uh, preparing people that rates could be 5%. That's what they're doing here. Knowing full well that that's not the case at all. Otherwise, they wouldn't be telling them to build their rainy day funds, etc. Uh, Gold silver ratio uh, down slightly over the last, uh, well, yesterday and, and overnight. You can see they're coming back to uh, 90 at the moment. And moving on to the markets, uh, we can see the Dow up uh, yesterday on uh, the news. The Fed's uh, still going to continue with its uh, rate rises at the moment, uh, trading up to 50% retracement there yesterday and the previous day's high. And overnight, the market looking to continue this by moving higher, as we can see, uh, up uh, quite a bit already. Let's just have a, a quick look at this uh, overnight. Uh, what have we got? Uh, we moved up uh, 247 points uh, uh, overnight there. Uh, let me just double check that. Yeah, 247 points uh, for the Dow. Uh, move up yesterday, of course, after the Fed spoke. There's the high. Watch the high. Uh, during today and also uh, DP make if the market closes below the DP it's got the 50 EMA and then back down to the 200 where it found a lot of support uh, during yesterday's uh, trading session in the German DAX uh, market uh, sideways to higher there as well let's just draw in uh, a couple of uh, fibs uh, you can see coming back to 62% retracement on the overnight and also the five bar moving average market will need to close above this and drive through this in order to keep the momentum to the upside in the 30 minute chart again you can see we've had a move to the upside it's 150 points as opposed to the Dow we're just coming back towards that 200 MA in the 30 minute chart let me just remove this line that was the one we looked at yesterday and also it will need to hold at the high so you could get a bit of a sell-off on the downside in the futures at 7 a.m down to the high but it'll be a crucial area to actually hold no matter what uh, the time frame yesterday's market action saw prices moving lower initially rallying up uh, 200 points running out of steam coming back uh, 100 points there uh, 150 points before then uh, move, making its way back up via small retracements uh, to uh, the highs that you saw uh, this particular high when uh, the Fed spoke and the Dow moved higher overnight bit of weakness to begin with down towards the DP oversold as you can see down here 
uh, with divergence and demand and then moving up that uh, 150 points of which the market uh, now is struggling uh, slightly. During yesterday's morning the futures market uh, down uh, finding support and then you'll see sideways and then the market uh, moving sharply higher as uh, the DAX open running out of steam becoming overbought crossover and then uh, moving all the way back as we saw in the 30 minute chart to the 200 MA finding support there back to the DP and then back down to uh, the close oversold, oversold there overbought here and then uh, moving back up once more in the afternoon which you'll see here that's the Dow you can always tell when the Dow is opened as the market had made its way back and then they continued to move the market to the upside until this selling came in got a bit of a bounce then back down and then of course uh, there's the uh, the market's reaction to the fed and then making its way back up overnight the market uh, gapped but then uh, filled the gap as you can see there and then uh, as i say at the moment it's uh, Got to make sure it stays above the high if it is to continue to the upside there. And yesterday's trades, uh, 38637, uh, with 73% uh, winners yesterday, uh, 27 losers, uh, four consecutive wins, uh, one consecutive loss, and a profit factor of uh, 3.06. Just a matter of holding those uh, big moves. And of course, the longer term continues to move as well. I'll add that back in uh, tomorrow. I forgot to run that report uh, this morning. But uh, yeah, a good week so far. I started off fairly quiet on Monday with uh, the market being in a very sideways range, but uh, has uh, managed to uh, move things back to the upside there. And in the S&P, similar to the Dow, the market uh, moving to the upside on the overnight. Uh, you can see there just about a 62% retracement. Again, like all of the other markets, uh, it needs to get above yesterday's high as far as the, the, the S&P is concerned and stay above uh, the DP. The averages are lined up quite nicely as well at the moment. In the Daily FTSE, we've got a, a nice retracement to 89% there. Yesterday, we see the market moving higher with some buying sideways at the moment. We need to get above these averages. And uh, let me just remove these fibs and replace them. I'm just going to double click twice on this bar because I don't have anything uh, lower outside of the, this low. So I can't do this to actually project. So just by clicking twice on that, I can actually uh, have this bar as a way to project it contains both the high and low is basically what i'm saying there you can see the market stuck at 62 at the moment 78 and 89 needs to be taken out as well of course the market uh, can soon switch and we end up moving back to the downside so again the high and the low of every previous day's trading is very very important the other fibs are important the dp in particular because obviously it's bullish if it's uh, above the daily pivot and bearish if it's uh, below but the high and low are under estimated by traders if you you know have a look and also the close as well and if you have a look at uh, many of the market alerts where we talk about this you see how really important uh, these levels are and once broken how the, the market will continue in that direction and vice versa so we got close to the high here the brn as well which ties in with this because of this what happened yesterday so you start putting all the pieces together and you can formulate a pattern and a repeatable pattern of what's gone before uh, the market needs to stay above that 200 ma in the 30 minute chart whether it does or not will depend on the 7 a.m opening of uh, the german market and in the currencies, uh, the yen coming off that 89% retracement with demand oversold in the daily. So looking for the prospect of moving higher. The dollar is lower overnight at the moment. We're just at the 38% retracement there. We've got the 20 bar and the 50 at uh, between the 50 and the 62. And then we've got uh, the 20 bar moving average between the 78 and 89 as well so you've got all of those areas of potential resistance if the market does move to the upside like it has done overnight uh, yesterday we had the sell-off followed by the rally of 100 points plus we're followed by 200 points to the downside where we saw the market over 
sold with divergence and demand and then uh, the market bouncing as uh, we saw uh, the dollar starting to decline a bit during yesterday's uh, trading session. In the pound also uh, demand for yesterday oversold, bit of a bounce there back above that 119 area. Uh, needs to get back above the uh, five bar moving average to start with. We've got uh, Fib retracement say again 38 tying in with the, the five bar as it starts to move higher and 62 also tying in with the 20 there. And the 30 minute chart for the pound also a bit of weakness to begin with then uh, shot up again you see how the, the low here uh, was important also the DP as well and once the market got to this then reversed and then how we bounced off this with the retracement the momentum switching and the pound making its way back up with a, another oversold condition there but the interesting thing here when you get this oversold and you don't get much of a decline you'll get bar, red bars that are sideways that's another thing to watch out for if you're actually long or short in the market and you start to get red bars sideways and you go to an oversold condition like this then watch out because it's likely to move back to the upside otherwise you'd have continuous red bars to the downside it's quite logical really and uh, finally in the metals uh, silver uh, demand for yesterday moving up on the overnight due for a, a bit of a, a dead cat bounce uh, i'm not convinced of any uh, move yet to the upside not if there's another rate uh, hike coming for july and uh, september I don't know what's happened to August in that news, but uh, probably one in August as well. Uh, then uh, we can expect silver to still be pressured to the downside, unless it disconnects from the US dollar, which uh, it can do. And uh, there's yesterday's action. You can see that we were oversold. We had that spike down below uh, the $19, which we saw in yesterday's market alert as I was recording. Uh, market rebounded off this. We've got an 89% retracement there, back down to another 89% retracement, and then back up again. And you can see how the again the low was instrumental. They shook out the low. They soon brought it back above the low, and then uh, as you can see, the high at the moment is also giving this uh, market some grief as well. Gold uh, hammered yesterday, uh, but uh, showing demand overnight. Really oversold at the moment. Due for a bounce. And uh, you would expect to get that if the dollar weakness uh, continues. Like I say, um, when is the FOMC? We're only at the big 7th of July, aren't we? So we should have another meeting. I'll check that, see when the potential rate hike is going to be. So yesterday on the ISM numbers, you can see that uh, the gold was absolutely monkey hammered down. I don't know why, because it's... Uh, an inflationary number but uh, there you go so uh, making up some ground overnight back to the dp for the dollar at the uh, the gold market at the moment us dollar got some supply overbought and uh, just showing a bit of a pullback there at, at the moment following that massive uh, move during uh, tuesday's uh, session and uh, yesterday uh, the supply coming in and uh, overnight a uh, bit of a move to the downside there crude oil also again moving slightly lower yesterday but finding some support we've got demand for tuesday and trying to maintain that 100 dollars per barrel level at the moment and fuel prices continue to remain high in the uk without any pullback in those whatsoever so there we go there's a, a quick roundup of uh, what uh, we can expect today is see if the stock markets can maintain the overnight uh, move to the upside. If not, then uh, watch out uh, for moves to the downside. Okay, that's it for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.